let's not beat about the bush. The Penguin was the main villain in a number of the worst episodes of Batman the Animated Series. I'm looking at you, I've got Batman in my basement. And yet, in the comic books, the character is one of Batman's premier villains. Now, I could be reading into things too much, but it always seems strange to me that Betas's version of Penguin wasn't really that different from the one in the comics. You might expect him to be very similar, but as I've previously established, the writers of the show tended to put their own stamp on villains like Two-Face, Mr. Freeze, and Clayface. So it almost seems like they included the Penguin because they felt like they had to? I can illustrate this point by looking at the Penguin's early days in the comics. The Penguin debuted in 1941's Detective Comics 58, and he quickly rose to being arguably Batman's number two villain behind the Joker. The Penguin was a criminal genius and a master thief. Armed with an array of deadly umbrellas, he took his name from the fact that he was a short, plump man wearing a smart suit which made him resemble a Penguin. Even Batman and Robin mocked his looks. The Penguin operated under a number of aliases, Mr. Boniface, P.N. Quinn, Ben Gwynn, to name but a few. But his real name wasn't actually revealed in the comics. No, instead, his real name was dropped into the spin-off newspaper strip of the 1940s. In this particular story, Batman and Robin discovered his identity, Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot, by reading a postcard addressed to him from his aunt. While he wasn't much of a physical threat, he was a crafty and cunning criminal. I can tell that the writers of these early comics had a lot of fun coming up with his schemes and the various gadgets concealed within his umbrellas. Initially, these umbrellas were pretty deadly. Think poison gas umbrellas, hidden sword umbrellas, liquid fire umbrellas. But over time, they softened to shoot nets or knock out gas or contain hidden cameras. You get the idea. The Penguin appeared in dozens of issues of Batman and Detective Comics in the 1940s with his appearances becoming few and far between during the 50s as Batman's adventures focused more on science fiction stories. He had a brief resurgence during the 1960s thanks to the Adam West starring TV show, but when that show ended and the comic books did everything they could to distance themselves from the campy antics of Adam West, it seemed like there wasn't much room for the Penguin. In 1989, the Penguin's origin was elaborated on in a short story by Alan Grant and Sam Keith in the Secret Origins special. The story is called The Killing Peck, potentially a play on the killing joke, which gave the Joker a more tragic potential origin. Oswald Cobblepot had been an unusual looking person his entire life and was the victim of bullying at school. His only comfort was the company of the birds in his family pet shop. As Oswald grew older, he became tired of being the butt of his peers' jokes, so he dedicated himself to learning martial arts and getting into shape. He then proceeded to beat his main bully senseless, finally putting a stop to the bullying, or so he thought. Sadly, his bullies killed his beloved birds in retaliation, and the penguin waited years to get his revenge. But when he did, it was brutal. So that brings us to the early 90s, when the creative team behind Batman the Animated Series began putting their ideas to paper. Paul Dini and Chip Kidd's book Batman Animated reveals that the BTAS crew originally wanted to use the comic book design for their version of the penguin. We can see that he strongly resembles the Golden Age design, with an array of gimmicky umbrellas and a bag full of loot in his mitts. This all changed, however, when Warner Brothers executives insisted that the design of the Penguin and Catwoman matched that of the characters in the then-upcoming film Batman Returns. As Paul Dini recounts in Batman Animated, One of the basic problems with Pengi has always been the virtual impossibility of making him appear physically threatening. He is, after all, almost a dwarf, and Batman could knock the little waddler cold with a love tap. Therefore, in early stages of development, we started thinking of the Penguin as a more cerebral villain who relied on his wits and his fists to combat the Dark Knight. The depiction of the Penguin in 1992's Batman Returns scrapped those plans. Warner Features insisted we make our version of the Penguin, as well as that of Catwoman Selina Kyle, more like their live-action counterparts. So Penguin was given a look very close to that of actor Danny DeVito in the film. Bruce Timm even visited the set to sketch Danny DeVito in full costume. Deanley claims that this sketch here is the one that Bruce Timm produced on the set of Batman Returns. But to me, this doesn't really look like Danny DeVito's character at all, which suggests he was still trying to hold on to that classic comic book design and potentially rejected Tim Burton's design. I kind of get the impression that the writers on BTS really didn't have a lot of ideas for the Penguin outside of making him a petty thief. 
In the show, the penguins' origins are never revealed, perhaps because the TV censors would never allow them to show acts of animal cruelty. But as Deany said, the penguin wasn't much of a physical threat, and the writers had already shown that they struggled with cerebral threats. Watch my Riddler video if you haven't already. Deany also recounted how they briefly entertained the idea of Penguin being the son of a domineering mother, but this was scuppered by Warner Brothers with their mandate that Penguin should be as close to the cinematic Penguin as possible, and this seemed to take the wind right out of their sails. The Word Balloon podcast recently shared an interview with story editor Martin Pascoe from a few years ago, when he recalled his experience as a story editor of most of the Penguin episodes. I believe we actually produced I've Got Batman in My Basin. Yeah, I remember that one, sure. <laughs> Yeah, that was when I was too crazy. <laughs> Most of the Penguin shows, I was the one I got stuck with them. Uh, I thought they were pretty lame. Interesting. The, the man who the man who invented the bat the Batmobile was that what it what it was called? The mechanic. The mechanic. There was, a, there was a, sh a show we did. One of the, one of the things you do when you're a story editor is when you finish the rewrite of something you really really hate, you wipe it out of your <laughs> and I, I hated the Penguin shows on so many levels. It makes sense that a lot of writers would pitch stories featuring the Penguin, given his prominent role in Batman Returns, but it's a shame that the writers of the show seem to lose interest in the Penguin. Now maybe I'm reading into things too much, but it really did seem like their response to this mandate was to just simply not use him very much. And when they did use him, they were mostly low quality stories, pawned off to the lesser animation studios like Dong Yang and Acom. It's a shame that the Penguin didn't get a bit more love and attention, because a lot of his early comic book stories are quite enjoyable, with some fun crimes. They position the Penguin as more of a criminal mastermind, often devising plans for other criminals in exchange for a cut of the take, and in some cases, all of the take. Arguably, the Penguin's best episode is Birds of a Feather. In this episode, we get a brief glimpse at the psychological motivations of the Penguin. All he yearns for is acceptance from high society the people he views as his peers, but they view him as a grubby little thief and a subject of mockery. It's hard not to feel some sympathy for the Penguin when he learns that his new friends were deceiving him, all in the name of making a joke at his expense and earning themselves some clout. When the Penguin gets revenge on Veronica Vreeland and her friend Piers, I can't help but find myself rooting for him, especially when he terrorises that smug pompous git Piers. <laughs> God, I hate his stupid face! The Penguin frequently served as a tertiary villain in episodes like Almost Got Him, The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne, and Second Chance. All of these appearances are arguably stronger than the episodes in which he is the main villain. It's almost as if the writers had the best time with the Penguin when they didn't have to think too much about why he was doing what he was doing. One thing of note is that shortly after BTS debuted, the Penguin's character was reimagined as less of a costumed criminal and more of a notorious businessman slash nightclub owner slash gangster slash arms dealer in 1995's Detective Comics 683. This same characterization, along with his more comic accurate character design, carried over to the new Batman adventures in 1998. However, once again, the Penguin took a secondary role in the stories he appeared in, acting as a fence for the villains, or just as a means of providing exposition. Speaking of the Penguin's radical redesign, back when the new Batman adventures first aired, they never disclosed how the Penguin's appearance changed so dramatically. It wasn't even mentioned until 2020's Batman The Adventures Continue. Turns out he was kicked out of a helicopter by Jason Todd and had to get reconstructive surgery. And I find it genuinely amusing that a 25 year old mystery that has befuddled fans for decades was answered so casually by Paul Dini and Alan Burnett in a tie-in comic. But they still won't say where that damn red Robin costume came from. So in summation, the team behind Batman the Animated Series really didn't seem to care about the Penguin. At the time, the character's best days were long behind him in the comic books. And it's a shame that the creative team didn't take the opportunity to redefine him like they had other villains. Perhaps things would have been different if Warner Brothers hadn't insisted that they synergize with the pending release of Batman Returns.